Hello and welcome back to The Last Lap. Now, a lot of you guys really enjoyed the stock car video that we did a couple of videos ago, so we've come back. Um, now, the main thing about stock car racing, which we didn't really cover in the last video, is that there's can be quite a lot of contact. Now, contact is allowed in stock car racing, unlike a lot of other forms of motorsport. Um, the stock rods that we looked at the last time were actually a non-contact formula, so this week we're going to look at a saloon stock cars, which is a full contact formula. They are not for the faint of heart, they are about as brash and mental as what you can possibly get. They're basically a, a cage on wheels with a shell on top, very similar to the likes of your legend cars and other stuff. Uh, but they're really, really braced up, they're really armoured, um, and they provide some absolutely crazy action guys in the wall, literally every corner, and then winning races in the same race. Um, so we're going to go and have a chat to Ian McLaughlin, who's kindly let us come and film with us, film with him tonight. Um, so we're going to go and have a chat to him and see how he gets on throughout the night. So here we've got our first look at a saloon stock car. So like I said, it is basically just a cage on wheels. They run a 2 litre Ford ZTEC engine. Uh, previously ran Ford Pinto engines, but Pinto's now getting a little bit hard to come by. Quite difficult to, to find in the numbers required, so the, the formula has moved on to, to the ZTEC engine. Again, plenty of power, um, really quite a simple engine to work with, which means they can be, they can be worked on and repaired quite easily. Also quite a, a large, pool of parts and spares available for them so you can just see from the inside here as well that these things are just basically all metal work there's very very little else in them other than just steel so Ian McLaughlin you're racing a saloon stock car. Now, we've looked at the stock rods a little bit earlier. What is the biggest difference you'd say between a saloon and a stock rod? Eh, uh, well, main difference is contact and non-contact, so... And when we talk about contact in, in stock car racing, you know, what's, what's allowed, what's not? Uh, in saloons, it's full contact. Fencing's allowed, fallings are allowed, no driver's door hits, and you're not really meant to get turned towards the wall, like spun out towards the wall, but obviously it happens through now there's a lot of things that guys do to race cars to kind of personalise them and stuff but I think this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen.
race one done then and just spectacular contact every single corner uh, but again that's the nature of saloon racing so we'll go and catch up with you and see what his thoughts are after race one Ian, first race done, how did you get on? Alright aye, was it too bad? A wee trip to the wall and it's part and parcel of the game isn't it? Well you mentioned, now you mentioned trips into the wall, you know, it's a, there's a lot of contact obviously in this kind of racing. Are there ever any grudges held or anything like that or is that just how it is? There's some people that hold a grudge. I mean it, it can get personal sometimes eh, like if it goes on and on and on and on. But majority of the time it's just one of these things that happens, part and parcel of the racing and you just got to take it and go on with it. Now, you've seen you changing a set of tyres, were you struggling for grip out there? We were, I was, it was really loose at the rear end in that one, eh, so... But, changed a couple of things, hopefully it'll go a bit better. Now, as usual, we've got the onboard camera in. We did use the cheaper onboard camera for the saloons, just due to the, na the high contact nature of the racing, but we can confirm it has, in fact, survived absolutely fine so hopefully we'll get some good footage from that show you guys and we'll hopefully not need to buy another camera after this meeting so we're just waiting for heat two to get cold and the rain is just starting to come down we're not really sure which way it's going to go yet so the car's jacked up just waiting to decide probably at the last minute whether he's going to go for wets or dry so we'll see what he, what he picks and uh, hopefully that helps him in the next race so something else i just want to show you guys just before he goes back out for heat number two it's just the amount of bracing that's in these cars to keep the driver safe. So you've got all of this bracing here, obviously. We can get the camera down. All this bracing here in the roll cage, but the whole car is effectively its own roll cage. The chassis is basically the roll cage. You can see all of this bracing along here, which uh, can really take quite a substantial impact. Again, every single bar, every single corner is gusseted. And again, all this rear crash structure which just makes the car completely solid again there's a fair bit of weight in these cars around 11 1200 kilograms so when you get trains of three or four cars coming in uh, and pushing you into the wall that's a lot of weight coming in behind you so the car has to be as strong as humanly possible uh, just to protect the driver for the saloon stock cars so it hasn't it's still spitting with rain but it hasn't really come down at all so it should still be a nice dry track the only thing is is that we're sharing the track with bangers tonight which are well exactly that they're bangers they leak a lot of oil leak a lot of water and stuff like that so what everybody's been saying is that it'll more than likely be really quite slippy out there so again we'll see how he gets on hopefully it's a slightly better result he was complaining of a lack of rear grip in the last race so he's made a couple of tire pressure adjustments uh, and whatnot so yeah we'll see how he gets on in this one
so heat number two for the saloon stock car is done. Probably one of the most uh, subdued saloon stock car races I've seen for a really long time. But again, track looked a little bit slippy. It looked like it was actually quite difficult to be able to make a move stick in the inside. So we're going to have a chat to Ian and see what he's got to say. Ian, probably one of the most subdued saloon stock car races I've ever seen there. What was it like from where you were? It was alright, it was a wee bit roundy roundy. That's the only problem with this one, there's no lot of cars, so you didn't get much action there. And it looked like it was getting quite difficult to actually get near anybody, everybody was kind of running the same pace. Yeah, every, there was nobody really electrically faster than anybody else, it was just, we're all about the same, eh, and that's it. Eh? Any changes for the final? Yeah, I've changed a couple of things again, it's still a wee bit loosen the units, so you can't really get the power down coming the car properly, so we've changed a couple of things again, both for the best. So another little interesting fact about these cars is that they actually run different suspension setups on the two front corners. On the left front corner you're allowed a second shock absorber just because turning right all the time that corner of the car gets far more loaded up than any other so they allow you to have a second shock which is something that personally I've never seen before. So a little bit of a fun fact about the formula is that a couple of years ago the retaining wall here at the race wall actually had to be rebuilt and reinforced with boilerplate. And the reason for that was that concrete just wasn't quite hard enough for the saloons because the saloons go into the wall that hard and that often that they were basically breaking right through the concrete and destroying the wall so quickly that they had no choice but to reinforce it with steel boilerplate. So that gives you an idea of just how much force is involved in the impacts that these guys take. So as the car's heading out for the final, we're going to go up into the stands and watch the last of the action. It's been a reasonably good night of racing action, although we could have done with probably a few more cars. But uh, yeah, go and see how, the, how he gets on in the final.
in the meeting with a final win. Um, as far as I'm aware, actually, I think that's the first win that we've had on the channel. Um, so yeah, great, great end tonight. We'll go and see what Ian's got to say. I'm sure he'll be pretty pleased with himself after we've seen him uh, go round on the parade lap. Fantastic. Ian, a final win. Yeah. You can't really get much better than that. That was alright, could have won another two as well, eh? <laughs> how was it from inside the car? It was quite good then. Car what, was going alright. How when you started off were you did you think you had a chance at the win or did it just kinda of come as an opportunity? Uh, car was going a lot better than what it was in the first two anyway, that's my for sure. Kinda of went off in the middle of the race and I was kinda of glad of that yellow flag stoppage. It just gave us a wee bit of chance to let everyone cool down a bit and go again, eh? So it was quite good then. Excellent, we'll see you again soon and very very well done for tonight. Cheers mate, thank you very much. So the end of the night's racing here at Cowden Beef, really really good to get a win for Ian in the final. Um, like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that is the first win we've had on the channel, so that was nice to get uh, get that ticked off the list. Uh, and we'll be back reasonably soon with some more really pretty cool stock car content uh, that we've got lined up coming um, along with usual legends and various other stuff. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.